In 2005, My Chemical Romance opened for the band Taking Back Sunday. In 1993, Green Day opened for Bad Religion, and in 2011, The Wonder Years opened for Yellow Card. Looking back, it's hard to imagine those bands as anything except headliners on nationwide or worldwide tours. But there was a time when those bands weren't the name on a concert lineup. But what I want to talk about today are opening acts in the current state of the scene. Bands that are playing first in 100, 200, 300 cap venue shows. Whose vans are powered by Mountain Dew and a dream. This is our bus van. We call it the banana sometimes because of uh, it's yellow. I am so excited to be talking about what I think is one of the most overlooked and special experiences to have in the scene, and that is seeing an opening act live. For those of you that don't know, many concerts in the scene have a headliner, sometimes a co-headliner, and then a slew of one, two, three, sometimes even four bands that play before them. The headliner presumably sells the most tickets and has the most fans there, so they're going to play the longest set and they're going to play last. The first band to come out and play is called The Opener, and they'll have the shortest set or will be tied with having the shortest set. Now you could call any band that plays before the headliner an opener, but I do want to limit this discussion to bands that are actually playing first at some of these shows. Usually the opening act is going to have a style of music that fans of the headliner are also going to like. And that's smart, right? The opening act is there not only to warm up the crowd and get people settled into the venue, but also to promote themselves and try and gather a new fan base. So it makes sense for them to be an opener for a similar band. That way people who have never heard of them before are more inclined to like their music. Unfortunately for the opening act, they are often seen as an afterthought, not a vital part of the show, especially for concert goers. Based on some estimations, just from personal experience at concerts, it is not uncommon that less than half of the crowd that ends up being there for the headliners is there for the opening act. Sometimes as little as 10% of the full venue size is going to be there to watch the opening act play. Why listen to some crappy opening act play songs you've never heard of when you can go right down the road and grab a beer with the boys before the good stuff starts to come on? Please don't take that as me saying that you're not a real fan if you skip the opening band. Oh, the show's at 7? We should probably leave here at 8.30. I really get it. I do. And I'm not advocating that doors should open at 6, doors should close at 6.30, and the concert should start at 7. We don't need to force people to come in and see the opening acts. What I am saying is that if you skip out on the opening act, you are missing out on being an early champion of what could end up becoming one of your all-time favorite bands. This has happened to me. I got to see Hot Mulligan open up for Seaway and Trophy Eyes, and they ended up becoming one of my favorite active bands of the scene today. I've seen so many bands when they were openers, like Spanish Love Songs, Can't Swim, Waster, Capstan, Lurk, Daniel Durek, Rachel Bobbitt, Sharia Moore, Microwave, so many bands that I went to those shows not knowing anything about them, and I came out as a fan. Sometimes just a casual fan, but other times, in the special times, a really big fan. Those are moments I look back on really fondly, and I'm so glad that I went and saw the opening acts play. I've also got the pain of missing out on some openers that went on and made it big, or at least became a band that I love. Sometimes a show is two hours away from me, and even if I leave right after work, I can't make it to the show on time to see the openers. That exact scenario kept me from seeing Pool Kids live when they opened up for the Wonder Years in 2020. For my very first concert ever, it was to see the story so far in Phoenix. And I got to the venue. When doors were opening, I could have seen every band, but I was so nervous and scared to be at my first concert. I was embarrassed that I wouldn't know any of the words to any of the bands opening. And so I missed out on seeing Light Years, Four Years Strong, and Terror opening for them. Idiot! Take it from me and don't be the person who looks back and wishes that they had seen the opener when they had the chance. Because there is a totally different stage presence that an opening act has compared to when or if they become headliners. Like seeing Capstan five years ago was way different than seeing them just a few weeks ago. Now they're tighter, more confident, have solid banter with the crowd, they've got tons of experience under their belts and it shows. But at the start, they weren't as polished. The vocalist didn't quite nail the notes, the crowd wasn't singing along, and those can all sound like bad things, but I do want to clarify that it's super fun to watch a band figuring things out as the opening act. Especially when you look back on it in hindsight and see how far that they've come. It's clear that they have talent and potential and they come out on stage and they're always super grateful when everyone shows up. They drum up the excitement for the acts to follow. There's been plenty of times where the opener's like, we've never played here before, and it's just unreal to see people singing our songs back to us. Thank you so much for coming out, and we can't wait to come back to this city. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel appreciated as a fan. And I like knowing that by showing up early, I'm helping support truly new bands or up-and-comers. 
the show feels a little more intimate and personal, often because it is, since there's not many people there. And as a huge advocate and enjoyer of live music, getting to the concert early to see every band on the ticket is a vital part of the experience for me. I think it's exciting to see a band on the lineup that I have no idea what they sound like. It gives the concert a hopeful anticipation that maybe I'm about to discover a band that I'm going to love. I'll be honest though, sometimes the opening act is really bad and you end up spending the entire set like, I hope this is their last song. I'm just saying that even though I'm advocating and highly encouraging that you never miss the opening act, it is still a roll of the dice. And I don't want to name names, but you should let me know in the comments some of the weaker opening acts that you've seen. Just make sure to balance it out with some of the great opening acts that you've seen, and let's support those bands. But ending up hating the opening act is always a bummer. Still, in those instances, I try and take away the positives because there are some benefits to getting to the show early. I love scoping out the venue before it gets crowded, deciding where I want to stand during the headlining act. I like going up to the stage and listening to the opener, like literally right in front of me playing, because when the headliner comes out, if you're that close to the stage, sometimes it gets a little too rowdy for my taste, I know. And I think it's really neat to see the other acts and the other bands walking around, taking pictures with fans, selling merch at the merch table, watching the other bands play. This all adds to the experience and makes me glad that I come to a venue early. And there are some upcoming concerts in 2023 that I'm really excited about the opening acts. Carly Cosgrove is opening for Hot Mulligan in the Wonder Years in February. Between You and Me is opening for Real Friends and Knuckle Puck in April. Anxious, Webbed Wing, Prince Daddy and the Hyena are all opening for Drug Church in March. And then Free Throw is going on tour with a couple bands that I've never even heard of. I'm super excited to discover some new music there. And as the year goes on, there will inevitably be more announcements for tours that I'll be stoked to go to and stoked to hear the opening acts there. It's really cool that after the hot mess that was 2020 and 2021, we're all able to go out to these venues and listen to our favorite bands live again. So I encourage you in 2023 to make this the year that you go out and see some of your favorite bands live. And if you do, make sure to give those opening acts a chance. I hope that by doing so, you end up finding some new music that you love. Unless you live in Montana where bands never go, then I guess you're out of luck. Thanks for watching anyway. Please make sure to check out my other video here where I talk about why pop punk isn't dead. And I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.